Hi, my name is Victor Bart, and this is my 1965 Unimog 404 with a diesel engine and it's almost finished. I have now an interior to go on my first big trip to the North Cape, but I need to do one major upgrade to bring it up to standards to 2022. And that is lithium batteries from AO Lithium because I gonna cook on induction. And let me show you my induction cooktop. And this is the induction cooktop from the IKEA and it's 45 euros. And I have here a very big Victron uh, inverter and this is 12 volt 2000 VA. So uh, yeah, let's uh, install some batteries in this uh, Unimog and uh, get the induction cooker running of the inverter. And right now I have here a bench and under in the bench I have an HCM battery from 100 amp hour. That was uh, temporary because the whole system is uh, built that it is uh, made for lithium. So I have the Orion Smart DC-DC converter that is lithium ready. The solar controller is lithium ready. I have a 190 watt solar panel on the roof. When I was searching for batteries and thinking what I want, I found a review of the AO lithium batteries by Andy of the Off Grid Carriage uh, in Australia. And I really like the AO lithium batteries because they have one function that I think is really important. Let me show you. If you ever watch Will Prowse's lithium refuse videos, you will see him with a saw opening the batteries. But this battery has four screws so you can open it and service it. So this battery allows you the right to repair. And I think that's a really important point. Let's unbox the second battery because I have two batteries uh, to make 12 volt 200 amps. The battery comes with a manual in English and really good soft packing foam around it. And a handle to lift it up. I contacted AO Lithium and I showed them my Unimog and I explained my plans to travel to the North Cape for six weeks. And they decided to support me in return for an honest review of the batteries. I gonna make the review of the AO Lithium batteries after my six week trip with my Unimog. I will cook on the induction, run my fridge, my laptop and I want to stay off grid for six weeks. So I gonna try to not plug in the shore power. I have it as backup but I will try that my truck with the DC to DC converter and my solar panel will charge the batteries enough that I don't have to plug in. So what does AO Lithium offer? This is a LifePo 4 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium ion battery pack and comes with Bluetooth so you can log into the battery and see what's going on. You can buy them as a single unit but if you order the 12 volt 200 amp hour pack you get two batteries and when you put them in parallel it gives you 12 volt 200 amp hour. If you get a battery pack with two batteries and gonna put them in parallel, it's really important that you gonna charge them to 100% before you gonna connect them together. And I uh, have this uh, Victron Blue Smart charger. This is 12 volt, 25 amps. So in around four hours, you can charge this from 0% to 100%. And it took around four hours to fill it up. So they come in empty. So it's now in Li Eon mode and you can set it uh, with this button or you can log in with Bluetooth and have with the Victron app all kinds of info. So it's now in bulk charge mode and it will take around 4 hours. I'm making a plan now to install them and I'm gonna use 70 uh, square millimeter cable. I think it's called 2 odd in the US. That's very thick and I need that for the inverter. Only <laughs> the terminals here are lowered uh, into the body. So if I take an 8 mm lug for 50 square millimeter cable, it fits in here. So that works. But that's not enough for my inverter. So this is the lug <laughs> for the 70 square millimeter cable. And it doesn't fit. 
because this part here is too thick and this is really uh, expensive really good uh, uh, terminals and this is a cheap one and this is probably a little bit smaller also and that fits so a high quality one doesn't fit and also because I need to put them in parallel I gonna use two lugs on one terminal so with the 50 millimeter lugs if I put one here and then I want to put one on top it is not flush on each other so that doesn't work and you cannot put a simple metal washer in between so yeah I really don't like this part of the design <laughs> it's just not so practical it looks nice but for one battery it's probably okay if you have not a too big inverter with 50 millimeter cable but with a big inverter and more than one battery it doesn't work so what I bought is this uh, stock of pure copper and this is 6 millimeter and I'm gonna make some filler rings in between here it's not the best option but this is the same material as a bus bar so it's probably will be fine and it's just important that this material goes on top of here and then the lug goes on top because uh, you have the uh, stainless steel bolt in the middle but this doesn't transfer that much energy all the energy goes through the lug and the copper to this part so yeah let's make some uh, spacer rings so we can see if we can put two 70 millimeter lugs uh, like this on top of the battery I made a copper ring so let's uh, test fit it so now the lug can go anywhere so if you put the lug uh, like this and then one on top and I already bought some longer bolts let's see if it fits I think I even need a little bit longer bolt to put a, a, a spring ring in it I like this much better because now I can have the cables over here to the other battery if I put it on this side so uh, yeah let's uh, make uh, four rings in total and then I can make uh, a design for a frame because now I know that the cabling will work uh, with the battery. I made now four copper rings, six millimeter thick, around 25 millimeter diameter, and they fit perfectly on top of here. And then the terminal will be on top instead of in this hole. And now I can make the configuration that I have here two lugs, here one lug. And on this side will be two lugs also and here one lug and then it uh, works. Let's scan the QR code on the side of the battery to install the app. Okay, uh, let's go to this URL. Google Play, AO Lithium app, install. Okay, that's pretty easy. Okay, it found two batteries and here on top we have uh, the numbers, the 3E that's this one and the 9C is this one. Let's connect to one. Okay, estimated charge time 1 hour 30 minutes, it's still on the charger, 70%, voltage 13.64, temperature sensor 22.2 current. 24.500 amp hour capacity and now it has 70 amp hour capacity now I need to figure out a frame around it and I have this plate this is uh, in Dutch beton plex not sure how it's called in other languages but it's really sturdy material I have here a small piece so let's see if I put it in between then I have a nice spacer here and I'm thinking to make like a box around it with a wall in the middle and then straps over it. And if it's not functional, I will design something else.
made a simple wooden frame that I can screw to the bottom plate in the battery compartment. And I made some spots here for straps and also here on the side. So I'm gonna put two straps uh, like this and one strap like this. And this battery is almost at 100%. To fit the lugs a little bit better, I'm gonna bend them out a little bit. So I have here an M12 rod and that fits perfectly in it. So I can just bend it a, a little bit. So it fits much better. And let's mark them that they are bent. Cables between the batteries that I'm gonna use is 70 millimeter cable. And the cable that goes uh, between here and between these two terminals needs to be the same length. So I'm gonna measure this one out and then cut the other one at the same length. And then crimp the lugs, heat shrink it and then we have the uh, two bridge cables. And I want to make it that it is slightly bent like this instead of a completely straight line. To cut the cables I use my heavy duty knip axe and that works pretty well. But there's a lot of ways to cut cables. Now we take the black cable and also mark it. So they are the same length. Andy from the off grid carriage, I have a tip for you. Get that big crimper so your German Australian superpower can handle the tool. This one, it's super easy. You can just put all your force on it and it won't break. I hope. Otherwise, it was 40 euros. It's one of the best investments you can do. Get an hydraulic crimper, and I think this is with a 12 ton press in it. I will put Amazon affiliated links to some tools and stuff and to the batteries in the description so you can check it out. We have two cables. I only need to heat shrink this one. Are they the same length? They are the same length. Time to remove my 100 amp hour HCM battery that I installed temporary. Now I'm gonna convince you why lithium it's just better than HCM in the long run. First of all, let's talk about weight. This battery is 30 kilos. <laughs> yeah, it's really heavy. This one is just 12 kilos, so way easier to lift. And with many fan builds, you have a limit of like 3.5 tons. So an HCM battery is a lot of weight for a build like this. With my Unimog I have uh, 1250 kilos more, so an HCM battery could work in my Unimog because I have the capacity to carry them. Let's talk about usable amp hours. HCM battery is safe to use to 50%, so you can only use 50 amp hours out of it. For incidental use you can go to 70%, but it's not recommended to do that a lot because your life of your battery will degrade uh, way faster. With a lithium battery you can use 95 amp hours, so almost all the amp hours that are in the battery. When I was testing them I had one that was uh, dropped to 3% and that was not an issue. So to get the same amount of amp hours as the lithium you need two 100 amp hour HCM batteries. So that would uh, be 60 kilo over 12 kilos. So that's the weight difference of them. It's a factor four or five. So that is a lot of extra weight. Let's uh, go to the cost. This HCM battery is around 200 euros. This Lithium battery is around $600, so around 550 euros. So to get the same capacity again, you need two of the HCMs, and then it becomes 400 euro versus 550 euro. So then the cost difference is not uh, that far apart. It's only a little bit more expensive, but also way lighter. And now comes the other thing where lithium is much better over HCM 
and that is the amount of charge cycles. In general, an HCM battery has 500 charge cycles to 50%, and a an, uh, lithium battery, yeah, some say 3,000, some 4, some 5,000, but we don't know yet because I don't think there are many lithium batteries that has like 3,000 charge cycles yet in the world. But it's a lot more than HCM. In the end, lithium for a long time use is just cheaper than HCM. But then you have other costs like your cost of your system. If you have a current system that is built only for HCM batteries, it's the cheapest to just swap it over. Because for lithium you need to have new uh, charge controllers, maybe new solar controllers. So the setup cost of lithium is a little bit higher than HCM if you already uh, have a working system. But if you have a new system and you need to buy every item, just go lithium with the right Victron care to charge it because it lasts way longer, it's lighter and the cost is in the beginning more but some say they uh, last 10 years and an HCM battery 3 to 5 years and like 5 to 6 years if you do proper maintenance really good charging so lithium is for me the way to go but if you have a small system for just a fridge, uh, maybe laptop charging, some lights and radio, an HCM will work fine. But if you want to cook on uh, induction or have big uh, inverter loads, lithium is just the way to go because the weight saving is enormous. And also they are both 100 amp hour and this one is taller and wider but the same depth. So the overall size of the lithium battery is just a tiny bit smaller than the HCM battery. I made a bench here and has several functions. First of all, of all it's a bench so you can sit on it and on this spot there will be a uh, toilet and here uh, there's a little uh, cover and I'm probably gonna put toilet supplies under it and then on this spot I will put the batteries on this side and the other side will be probably food storage or something like that. So I have the battery frame here that I gonna bolt to this uh, plate here. And under this plate there's 2 cm styrofoam as extra insulation. So uh, the cold from the bottom won't be uh, transferred into the batteries. So let's test fit a battery and see how we're gonna place them. If I put them in like this, the positive is here and the negative is here. But we have here the fuse holder that's gonna get a 300 amp uh, fuse. So that needs to be to here and here we have the shunt from Victron. So the cable needs to cross now. So I don't like that. So what we can do is turn around the battery and then put the other battery here and then the negative is on this side in line with the shunt and the positive is on this side in line with the fuse. So that makes the cable runs much nicer and no crossing cables. I gonna fill around with the battery cables and see how I gonna do the cable runs but I will do that off camera and crimp the lugs and stuff like that. So uh, be right back. The cables are now installed and I installed some 300 amp ANL uh, fuse here. And I have a Victron smart shunt here that's now also powered on. I didn't install this battery cable because right now I only connected this battery. So let's switch on the rest of the system. Okay, we have now lights on. The fridge is off and now we can see the power usage of the system is now minus 11 watt. So the time remaining with the lights on is 10 days. Let's turn on the fridge and see 
what happens? The fridge is switched on and now the power is minus 44 watts. And this is the starting power. And now the time remaining is one day and 12 hours. And now the power is on minus 49 watts and one day uh, remaining. But this is a compressor fridge. So probably when it's uh, on temperature it uh, won't use that much power anymore. But for the starting it will use uh, 50 watts. Minus the 11 watts of the lights and other things that are taking a little bit of power. Now let's turn on the inverter. Okay, minus 64 watts. So the inverter is now powering this power socket. So let's plug in the tool. And here I have my uh, Hitachi wood router. And this is 710 watts. And with one battery, that is around the maximum that I want to pull out of the battery right now. Because with the induction cooker, I need both of the batteries to have all the power. So it now says minus 65 watts. So let's turn on the router. And it's now minus 165 watts. Let's make a mess and see what the tool does. 190 watts. And now back to minus 65 watts. So everything is working. And right now the power is on minus 10 watts again. Because the lights are still on. But the fridge is now on temperature. So that doesn't use uh, power for now. So that's why you need a compressor fridge. Because it's really power efficient. I've here the cable of the Victron battery charger. But it has one problem. The eyes here are M8. Which works perfect on top of the batteries. But I want to connect one lug to the shunt. And the other lug to uh, the fuse box. Because the shunt needs to be between this cable and the batteries. So when I charge the batteries it also detects that. So what I'm gonna do is just cut off the super nice lugs that are on. <laughs> and put M10 lugs on it. Because then it fits and otherwise I need to buy an extra block and make new extra cables and have extra cost. Which is unnecessary if I just gonna put better lux on it it works fine and this is a six millimeter cable inside so uh, nice and thick so the cable is done even with some heat shrink here so uh, ready to install it the system is now working on one battery and the rings uh, were crate of 6 mm of pure copper to get the lugs on top of the batteries. The cables are already here. Here we have the fuse holder. And here we have the smart shunt. And the little cable to power the smart shunt. And here we have the Victron cable to connect the lithium battery charger if needed. And the cables run from here, under here to the battery switch on the negative bar yes that works and is fine if you wire it correctly here the big 2000 VA inverter which is 1600 continuous here the fuses for the 230 volt two power bars one is for the inverter the other one is for the shore power and they both have a uh, status uh, light here and from here I have a 100 amp fuse that goes through the 25 millimeter cables to the rest of the system with a big fuse box here here the dc to dc converter to charge while driving here a solar controller here my uh, small inverter that i bought way before my ideas of the induction cooktop and this is the induction cooktop of 45 euros by the ikea and the rest of the system with a lot of fuses and a voltmeter and usb and and even here a battery protect that I used with the HM battery and I'm probably just gonna leave it in the system. I 
have here a half a liter of water and I'm gonna put it on the IKEA induction stove and this is the cheapest uh, option by the IKEA 45 euros for 2000 watt unit but we can't run it on 2000 watt on this inverter but on setting 7 it uses 1500 watts so that's the maximum we can use so let's see how long it takes to boil some water. Let's put it on setting 7 and see if that works. Let's go to the Smart Shunt app. And now the power usage is 1710 watts out of the batteries. So that's a lot of power. Time remaining 1 hour. 10 minutes and already counting down. The voltage is already dropped to 12.7. State of charge 99%. So for induction cooking you need a lot of power. And 136 amps. <laughs> That's a lot. So this also could uh, test to see if the cables don't get warm. And in the AO Lithium app we have a current draw of 73 amps. So that is good because 100 amps is safe to pull out of the battery. Uh, I already see some bubbles in the water. So it's almost uh, boiling. And that is in 2 minutes 40. So probably in 3 minutes we boiled half a liter of water. Yes, it's boiling 3 minutes. So half a liter of water you boil it in 3 minutes. That's pretty decent. And the state of charge is now 93%. Oh, the discharge floor was on 50%. Let's put that on 5% because it's lithium. I checked all the connections between the battery and the inverter and every connection is just called to the touch. So nothing overheated, nothing has a bad connection. So this is a successful uh, battery install. And the smart shunt is now showing minus 11 watts. So let's turn on the big inverter. Minus 24. So running the inverter in idle mode will use some power. So the best thing is to turn it off when not using it. What we also need to do is set up the DC-DC converter and the smart solar controller. Also both Victron products. So battery settings. So it's now an HGM spiral cell. Then we can select preset and we gonna choose lithium iron phosphate lipo 4. So we have an absorption voltage 14.2, float voltage 13.5. And now in the Victron app I have the smart shunt, the battery charger, the Orion DC-DC converter and the smart solar controller. So I'm getting more and more Victron gear in my Unimog and I really enjoy using Victron stuff. Both batteries are now fully charged so let's check the voltages because you can only connect the two batteries together if you have less than 0.1 voltage difference. So this battery is 13.51 uh, uh, volt and the other one is 13.56 volt so that is a uh, 0 0.05 voltage difference so that is good to connect them together so the batteries are now secured with straps and connected together without sparks so I can take off the safety classes so the first thing that we now need to do is go into the Victron smart shunt and we gonna reset it and we gonna set the battery capacity to 200 amp hours and now it says 100% 13.53 volts time remaining infinite because I didn't power anything else of the system that's the next step it's now two months later since I built in the AO lithium batteries and I had a lot of issues with my Unimog so I couldn't finish this video because yeah my engine is out my cabin is off and I swapped a gearbox and I swapped another gearbox so yeah I run a little bit out of time and my plan was now to stand on the North Cape with my Unimog. <laughs> yeah that plan didn't work out. So let's show you the batteries that are installed and tell you about the experience with them. Because 
I didn't travel a lot with them, but I still use them to cook and run my fridge. Uh, also inside of my workshop to make meals. I'm really happy with the placement of the Aeolithium batteries here in the bench. And the copper uh, spacer rings work great. And the Victron shunt uh, work absolutely great to monitor them. And I can uh, log in on both of ba the batteries to monitor them over Bluetooth. So I can really see how much energy is left. And I just run them flat. So I just connected my Victron charger because I had 6% batteries left. And that's the advantage of lithium batteries. You can really uh, pull every energy out of them. But while driving, my DC-DC converter worked really well. It was just uh, supplying 30 amps of charge. So uh, when I'm driving, this is perfect. But as you can see, I already upgraded my solar panel. And in the next video, I will show you the details because my 190 watt solar panel was not enough to stay off grid for longer than a day. So I upgraded to a 340 watt panel and this solar controller. And the Victron Phoenix 2000 VA inverter works really great with a basic IKEA induction stove. I will do a full review of the Aeolithium batteries after my travel plans that I have in June. And there I also will go like off grid for four or five days. So that's why I also upgraded the solar panel. So my current experience without upgraded solar panel was running lights of course, running the fridge, running the radio and making three full meals with 20-25 minute cooking before I consider that the battery pack is getting low. So that's pretty good. So that works really great for traveling where you stay like one day off grid and then continue traveling. So that's why I have the upgraded solar panel to extend that period. But in my full review I will go in more detail about that. If you want to know more about Aeolithium batteries I will put a link in the description to the website of Aeolithium. And I will link the Aeolithium Amazon store in the description with affiliated links. So if you buy the batteries that will give me a little bit of uh, money out of the sale that doesn't cost you more but that helps me traveling around and improving the Unimog. What you also can do to support my channel is go to my Ko-fi page or do a PayPal donation and thanks for watching.